Okay, greetings everyone out there in um, Zoom land. Uh, this is Bard 101. I am your intrepid instructor, I'm Myri, Myri Blackadder now. Used to be Myri Nick Siobhan, but I changed my name to be less Irish and more Scottish. Aha, 1997 Gaelic is, you know, what I was working off of when I, um, when I submitted my name in Kaite when I was 17. So yeah. It's a little it's a little more updated now for my persona uh, i live in the great kingdom of ontier i'm the current uh, bardic champion of dragon's lair um i have been the kingdom champion of ontier and the bardic champion of blotha nor so i've got a lot of competition experience so i view things usually from a competition lens this is going to be kind of a more uh it's called the quick and dirty approach so it's kind of a holistic general overview of how to get started in the great tent that is um, bardic in the sca because it is a very big tent and we want all of you to come play with us so we've got um a few friends here today joining us from other we've got someone from atlantia we've got someone from um scald i just forgot our baby kingdom avacol right is that it yes no i don't know avacol yes our baby kingdom scald from griffin eye news is joining us so if i mess up it'll end up on their next uh their next news channel show so welcome to barb 101 a quick and dirty crash course thank you for joining me uh let's see let's get started oh maybe we don't want to switch there it is my buttons aren't working okay so topics we're going to cover today what was a bard historically what is a bard in the SCA? What can you do to become a bard? Um, some sources you can look into, and then we'll have a chance for some questions. I've also just tonight added a little secondary um, advice and etiquette portion, which I used to just give verbally, but I went ahead and made some nice slides for y'all. And if you see cats roaming back and forth, I apologize, my cats are a-holes. So what is a bard historically? Um, well, it's it's, it's interesting because we use that word as a big, it kind of means all performing arts in the SCA, right? Historically, where bards came from, bardic schools started in Ireland and made their way over to Scotland in the 11th century. Uh, children from of noble blood, from noble houses, were sent to these colleges where they learned hundreds of poems by heart. Um, they had to learn a specific bardic language, which was specialized to this educated and upper crust uh, caste system of people. They learned this language style in order to compose their own poems, their praise poetry, and their stories. A Scot Scottish and Irish bard, their main job was to extol the virtues of the lord or king that they were working for, um, the bravery and the prowess uh, in battle or of you know, their family, their wisdom as a just ruler, as well as to talk about the beauty and grace of the lord or king's wife. A bard could make or break your reputation in court. Absolutely. Um, oftentimes they would satirize uh, their, their political um, rivals in, in poem or in song. It would, they could flat out make fun of a particular leader um, or a rival to the, the bard's employing lord. It was not good to be in the sights of an angry bard. Their job also entailed keeping the history of the employing family the family line, the local uh, customs, the great battles that were fought in, and uh, local law. They also did things like um, wills and inventories and a lot of legal work, which I really enjoy being a bard in the SCA because that ties into being a paralegal to me in my mundane life. Bards also held an extremely special place in Celtic society. Um, oftentimes, they were almost as highly regarded as the lords and kings that they served under. They spent years learning the Bardic arts and they not only memorized hundreds of poems or stories, they were specifically trained to create their original works in the high language of the Bards as we've kind of gone over already. So historically, the Bard was the historian, the storyteller, source of news, the political satirist, more than just entertainment. They were a major part of Celtic society. Um, all of that little uh, bit of information that I just gave you can um, also be found in the Bardic Source book here, which is a fabulous uh, historical source about uh, Irish Celtic Bardic schools. It is on Amazon and it's like, 25 bucks, it's not too expensive. Uh, I actually borrowed a copy from my current Baron that I'm serving under. And when I am finished with it, I'm gonna be passing it on to the next worthy Bard for their edification. So, 
that's historically bard being a Gallic word, meaning something specific to Gallic culture, Celtic culture. But what is a bard in the SCA? And that, that's where we get into this wonderful big tent that I love to say is all welcoming. So the brilliant thing about the SCA is, is bard is our catch all term for everything. You can be a musician, a storyteller, a poet, an actor, a singer. Uh, I have bardic uh, friends that do puppetry. I have friends that do dancing because um, for their culture, dance tells a story. They're from an Eastern culture. So looking at this from a world view, you know, to the Scots, a bard would tell the epic poems and they would brag about the history of their landed lord or king. Um, in Asia, dance was used to tell stories. We have this, this amazing worldview that we can pull from depending on our personas and the time period that we are, are, are trying to affect in our, in our SCA play. So as the SCA continues to evolve, really so do the bardic arts. And when the SCA first started, it, there was a lot of, you know, I don't want to say guys and gals, a lot of people, you know, they had their bardic stick and their, their tokens on it and their books. And there was a lot of filking and there was a lot of circles and, and, and singing of these filks around circles um, or what was thought to be Celtic songs. Um, but it's really and wonderfully, I think so in the last 50 years, evolved to include so much more. And I'm really excited about that because that means your style of bardic and my style of bardic, why they don't necessarily come from the same time period, the same worldview, um, we're both entertaining and enriching the medieval uh, culture that we're trying to create in the SCA because after all, we are kind of our own little strange thing, aren't we? It's from a, from a sociology standpoint, the SCA is enormously fascinating, but I digress. <laughs> so as the SCA continues to evolve, the bardic arts do, and we have so many bards in on tier that we have different types of performing arts. We probably have a bard for every type of performing arts. Um, the phrase used um, as a catch-all, and it's fairly interchangeable. So I don't want you to think I can't be a bard because I don't sing Irish songs. I don't ever want you to tell yourself I can't be a bard because I don't play the harp. These, these are old and for the SCA, they're, they're outdated and they don't serve any of us to make a welcoming environment. So um, I ask you to be as inclusive with yourself as you would be to others. And so go ahead and give yourself that grace to try something new and out of the box. What am I? What are you? Well, I'm a bard. I'm, I was mainly 14th century. I've moved myself more into 16th century. Um, I play a bit in both. I've moved to 16th century because it was easier for me to document a female writer, um, someone who could support herself through writing. While there hasn't been anything that I have found in my research that says women couldn't be bards, there also wasn't anything saying specifically that women were bards. So I moved my persona from 14th to 16th century, where there had already been women from the 15th century forward writing, not necessarily to support yourselves. Um, we have to get more into Tudor England before you find women supporting themselves with their writing. Um, and one of my focuses there is um, the first Tudor female secular poet, Tess, um, Isabella Whitney. So I'm a bard. I call myself a bard. I'm Scottish. I try to do Celtic tales, Gallic songs. That is my focus. However, you don't have to call yourself that. Um, there's a lot of different terms that you don't hear as much in the SCA, but I think if you feel um, mean more to you and what it is that you are performing, excuse me, take a quick sip here. That's party advice later on. Please always have some water with you. So um, a trouvor or a troubadour, for instance, uh, the class of lyric poets and poet musicians that were often knights um, flourished through the 13th to the end of the, the, I'm sorry, 11th to the end of the 13th centuries, chiefly in the south of France and northern Italy, and their major theme was courtly love. They sang songs of courtly love. So if bard doesn't resonate with you, but this time period and this era and this area of the world resonates with you and your persona, then maybe consider yourself a trouvor. And then you can focus your, um, not just your persona work, but your um, research, excuse me, the word escaped me. You can focus your research into looking into trouvor or troubadour songs, and that will help you find more songs that maybe appeal to you. 
um, a jongleur, which I think is a wonderful word. I wish people would call themselves this more or we heard it more or it was kind of just used so we could feel free to use it. The itinerant medieval entertainer, the juggler, acrobatic musician, recitation of maybe short poems or prose. I love this. I think a lot of people fall into this and don't think that they, don't think that they um, have another word they can call themselves. So if you're not comfortable with bard, because it just doesn't make sense for your persona. Um, think, think about jongler, especially if you're somebody who does, likes to do a variety of things. Um, I have a great friend, she left on tier, I can't think of the state she moved to, but um, she's really what I would consider a jongler because she does these kind of fun science experiment type performances because she's a science teacher that are geared towards being magic tricks. And it's really a lot of fun. Um, a scald. We have a scald here with us today. I think if you if you look under Griffin Eye News, we've got a scald right there. Uh, so in ancient Scandinavia, right, the composers and reciters of poems honoring heroes and their deeds, um, telling those massively long poems and stories. Oh, snore. But if that appeals to you, then please, by all means, be a scald. Um, I, I like to encourage everyone to be as his, not historically accurate necessarily, but as specific to their persona as they can be and as they want to be. Because I find that really personally exciting when you can hone your performance and your research into something your persona would have actually known. You don't have to do that. I'm kind of an uber nerd when it comes to bard stuff. And so that's where I, I kind of laser focus. If I'm in the 16th century, that I feel I should only know songs from X to X and from this region to this region because my persona was educated as thus. You don't have to do this. You can learn, sing, perform, prose, anything you like. My whole point is that there are other options for you out there if you, the term bard you feel does not speak to you and your performance style. So really, it all depends on you and what it is that you are looking to do in the SCA. All right, I was just checking my chat. I don't see any questions. I'm gonna take a quick water break. And as I said, this is the quick and dirty crash course. So I probably won't keep you here a full hour. Um, this is kind of the general overview and, and I think it helps get your feet wet if you don't already know about Bardic Arts. Question I got a lot when I was kingdom champion because you got that big cloak with a giant lion on it and everybody knows who you are is how do I become a bard? And honestly, the answer is show up and perform. It can be a competition. You can just do competitions. I tend to do mostly competitions. You can just do fireside bardic. That's amazing. And it's deeply entrenched in our SCA history. You can do these online bardics, which have been going on now for mm, damn near 20 years, which is a wonderful way to learn new pieces and meet new people and practice your performance pieces. Um, you could do feast hall performances, you know, if, if they want someone to give that medieval feel during a feast. Um, so really, it's just dependent on you to show up and do the thing, just like it would if you wanted to be a fighter, you would show up with your armor and you do the thing. Some ways that you can kind of break in there material wise, um, there's SCA songbooks, Elf Hill Times. In the 80s, there were a ton of filks written by bards in the SCA, and they were put in these volumes of books. I think I have five or six that were passed down to me by somebody who was leaving the SCA because they had moved, I think they were older and just wanted to give out their SCA stuff. But you can ask around the community, chat rooms, Facebook, see if anybody has copies of these or they can lend you some. I will say caveat, be careful with some of those filks. We'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, there's what's period-esque or period you might hear them called songs and that usually refers to something that sounds medieval so generally people use that phrase when they mean a song that's original or it's about the SCA in some way or a person in the SCA but it's written in a period style so if you were to write an epic poem about the final battle in let's say crown tourney which was yesterday on tears crown tourney was um, streamed for us for the first time live ever. It was amazing. And um, I watched the new crown prince, just that, that man moves faster than the speed of light, I think. So there could probably be some pretty awesome poems written about that. So that would be like a period-esque uh, performance piece. 
there's also something uh, referred to as like folk tombs. I'm sure you've never heard that before, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of Irish, Scottish songs from the 18th century, 19th century, sea shanties. There's all these things that we associate with um, medieval play that are perfectly acceptable. Uh, one of our bardic champions here in Ontario, Runa Harris' daughter, does amazing call and response, um, Irish call and response songs, and they're a hell of a lot of fun. She made it to the finals in the last um, Ontario Bardic Championship, and it really gets the audience involved when you do those type of stories. So um, anything that would fit within that kind of realm of it sounds like that 10 foot rule, but with sound, right? It feels medieval or it seems medieval or it, people have always thought it was medieval. Go ahead and perform it unless it's a period only circle, but we'll touch on that in a bit. So your original songs in a period-esque style is period-esque, obviously we already talked about that. Filks, contrafacting in period is what that's called. So if you were to take the tune of green sleeves and you were to put words to it about your baron, you have just created a contrafact. Those were extremely popular um, in period, mostly because you could hand somebody a broadside, one of those broadside ballad sheets and they would already know the tune because everybody knows my Sharona. And so they could all sing the words along to that tune. And it makes your audience participation go up. And frankly, it's kind of easy. I, I wrote a filk once to House of the Rising Sun, the animals version um, about my Baron and Baroness. And it worked well because I was at a feast hall so I could belt it out. It's not medieval. Uh, I was challenged to write a song on the spot. I went with House of the Rising Sun. So <laughs> consider yourself a little open and write some write some of those if that's how you want to slowly get your feet wet and step in and then you can move into the more period-esque or folk tunes or or period style songs and stories make sure you ask if the circle that you're going to be in or the performance space is period only there are what we all know are called enchanted grounds where when you go in there you are expected to be in persona to keep your um phones and your cameras and things put away and so that circle, like I think Duke Caradoc still runs a period only circle, a chant ground circle at um, Pensick. So you want to ask ahead of time. Generally, they are advertised, though, if they're going to be a period only circle, but it's totally OK to ask. You want to know what you're going into. So if you don't have any period pieces, you know, you can still go and listen, um, but you don't want everybody giving you side eye when you decide to do a piece from cats because you didn't realize it was a period only circle. Uh, for competition, you can do period stories, songs, poems, instrumentals, whatever. Generally in a competition at a kingdom level, that's usually required here in Ontario, you need to have two period pieces and one uh, can be an original SCA style periodoid period-esque piece. I know that each kingdom is different, so I want you to take what I say with a grain of salt and the understanding that it's been licked by on tier, and so it's going to be a mostly an on tier plate, but in competition, I mean, they're usually raising the bar, so expect that you'll probably have to have something, period. Uh, and that, again, will be advertised ahead of time. Um, you can do your originals in a period style, which I have done. The kingdom uh, championship that I won, I wrote a play scene about again the same baron that I'd written that other song about and his love for his wife but I did it in sort of a Shakespearean iambic pentameter commedia dell'arte kind of feel to it where I basically made fun of him and luckily he liked me enough to where I wasn't kicked out of the barony <laughs> and everybody got the joke because he's he's a well-known knight uh, feel free to branch out into that a little bit that kind of you know, you can be a little edgy and make fun of people, but make sure you have that relationship with them beforehand. I don't want anybody being talked to by a king at some point. Um, also, SCA songs can be welcome in competition. I have done baronial competitions where a period piece wasn't required and you could just do SCA songs or SCA originals, and that's perfectly fine. But these are just all ways that you can become a bard or break into the, the bardic world in your area. The Brave and Bonnie Host is probably what I would consider Ontier's theme song. And this is just to give you an idea of a piece that's very well known. It is an SCA piece. Uh, people have used it in competitions or people sing it in a feast hall. And they have, I've heard that, that uh, down in summits, they all sing in their feast halls together and sing alongs. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. It, it sometimes happens. Okay, see, so 
you, you, you might find yourself not knowing the words. So um, you can always ask around, ask your local bards, ask your, maybe your Chatelaine if they have a bard, if they can get you in touch with somebody who might know what your, your local or your theme songs for your area are. The other thing that I've done in the past is I've Googled SCA songs, and there are some websites dedicated to local songs of different kingdoms. So that can be a lot of fun to see what other kingdom, like there's that anthropology of other kingdoms that I think is always interesting to look into and delve into. So this, there's, you can YouTube this song if you don't know it and it'll pop right up and you can hear someone sing it. I mean, there are some great SCA songs out there. Um, one that's really famous that you probably heard going around a ton on TikTok this summer was um, My uh, Savage Daughter, which was written by Windrith Bergen's daughter and is an SCA song and has always been an SCA song and it's not a traditional Viking song. And there's a lot of people that think it is and will apparently die on that hill. Windrith Bergen's daughter is the original author and singer. So if you see anybody else trying to sell that as their song, it's an SCA song, Windrith wrote it. Sorry, a little bit of a soapbox there. Sources, we've kind of already talked about the first one. SCA songbooks are great. The thing I will say about a lot of the SCA songbooks, I haven't seen any in the last 20 years. I mean, they're all pretty early. Some of the filks, in my opinion, use some language that can be triggering. And I would encourage you before you perform anything is to really look at it from that lens of if you jokingly sing a song that says that we're Vikings and so we rape women, um, that's not necessarily going to be well received by everyone. Really kind of look at your audience where you're at and, and, and think about that you might be singing something that that might be inappropriate and, and might upset some people. Um, not everybody ascribes to that, but I'm going to tell you that you probably aren't going to want to sing every song that you find. That's again, that's a SCA licked, take it with a grain of salt opinion, trademark me. Uh, child ballads, there's over 300 songs in this ballad selection, all written down. I think it was like in the 1800s. And it's, it's that uh, you know, traveling around Ireland, writing down the the ancient songs kind of thing. But there's some great songs in there. I'm sure you'll recognize a lot of them. Uh, Gypsy Rover, for one. Unfortunately, that's a, a word we can't use. And again, in polite company, as 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 catchy as the song is, but there are songs in Child's Ballads that you would have heard. Uh, Tudor Madrigals. If you Google Tudor Madrigals. These are fantastic group songs, obviously, because they're magical. So if you have a local group and you want to get people singing, that is a, that's a good source. Guillaume de Marchat was the 14th century. He was an epic, prolific writer of secular songs and monophonic pieces for one voice. I love Guillaume Marchat. I, when I won Kingdom, I sang one of, of uh, his monophonic songs. And I think they're absolutely, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, as far as period music goes, it's it doesn't have to be stodgy. And another question I get a lot is, well, I don't want to sing religious songs. Like, and I get that. Uh, you have to understand that, you know, for a certain time period, songs weren't really written down unless they were for the church. Looking for secular songs, they're out there. Just know, depending on where you're at, if it's a Christian country at a certain time period, it might be harder for you to find songs that you could document that are period. Now, if you never need a period song, if you're only going to sing around fires or you only want to enter competitions that don't require period music, that's fine. And, but it's, it's, it's just fair warning that if you are entering a competition and you need a period piece and you don't want to sing religious songs, you're going to have to maybe expand your search to another country or other time period. Um, the Elder or Eddas and Norse, which are those long, beautiful, epic poems that go on and on and on. And if you can memorize it, I will give you a cookie because I sure couldn't. The other, the other wonderful, sorry, my cat wants out. Your local bards. We don't bite. We try to be friendly. People are people. You're going to talk to some people and they might be snobby. You're going to talk to other people and they might geek out and freak you out because we want to talk about this thing that we love, this performance that brings us so much joy. Um, it's been really hard for me not having a lot of events because I really enjoy performing in person. Uh, it's hard for me to perform online. Um, but, you know, you can keep talking to enough people until you find the one that clicks for you. But I think it's great to branch out and get to know your other bars, um, mostly so we can all support each other. But also some people might have some pieces or um, some research that you've never even thought of that opens up a 
whole new avenue for you of things that you want to look into. You can also just Google things like Celtic, Celtic literature. And there's this, this link here, this Mary Jones. It's an old website. And I don't know how much longer it's going to be up there, but she has a whole bunch of um, Scottish and Irish and Welsh like stories on there. And the dates are on there for, you know, like 1804 and uh, the dates of the stories. But what I think about that is it's just gonna, good to get started somewhere. Learn those Victorian Celtic stories and that will help you branch out into either finding period pieces or maybe that's your niche and you're just gonna do those stories or writing your own pieces. And what I have done is I have looked into um, Scottish like fables, but more so like, okay, you know, what are, what are the, what are the boogeymen? You know, they have the, the Ben Nye, they have the green washerwoman and, and you know, the Irish have the, the banshees. So I've looked into what the local, just the lores are, the names of the boogeymen or the names of the elves. And then I've written stories using those, um, not the stories already written down, but just using those as my touchstone pieces. So I wrote a story about the washerwoman that is original, but it uses the Ben Nye as my focus point. Advice. Bring a bottle of water with you at all times. Uh, you're gonna get a dry mouth or a dry throat. You just, you will. Um, a small sip of whiskey or a little hot water with honey will help to warm up your vocal cords. Uh, you can't really, you know, sit in a circle and do your, your me, me, ma, mo, mu. Um, you might not have a chance or you might've been sitting for a while and so you're unable to warm up. So a little bit of, of warm water and honey if you don't imbibe, um, but whiskey, just the tiniest sip, something like that will help warm up your vocal cords because you don't want to injure that. That's your instrument. Know your venue. We kind of touched on this already. Is it a period only? Is it an enchanted grounds? Knowing your venue is important. Uh, SCA originals are period-esque okay. Is it a body bard? They have body bardics all the time, usually after 10. Is it a family story time bard? Is it a competition? You're gonna to wanna to pick your pieces that you're gonna be performing based on your venue. Also really important, I didn't write this down. Know who, if you're performing songs, you need to know who wrote them and you need to give credit to the person who wrote it. A period song, while it belongs in the, um, the public use, you, you still wanna say, this is a Guillermo shot song, but specifically for songs that might have been written by Skadians, they could be sitting there with you. You, you don't know. Their, their brother, cousin, husband, wife, sibling, nibbling could be sitting there. So you want to make sure you're giving credit for the performance that you're doing. Um, and if you happen to know that that person is there, uh, always good to check in with them and make sure they're okay with you doing their original song because they might actually want to do that. Watching your times is going to be important. You want to be reasonable with how long you take. Uh, for songs, you figure three minutes, five minutes max. Uh, for stories, really eight minutes max. I can go on for 20 or 25 minutes. Nobody wants to hear me talk for 25 minutes unless they're coming to see me specifically perform. And others are sitting there waiting for their chance. So we don't want to be time hogs. Uh, make sure you bring your lyrics, your notebook, your bardic book that you write in. I know it seems like kind of a, well, of course I would, but sometimes it's easy to forget what our lines are or, or that point in the story where maybe you just have your bullet points written down for your story. So it's good to have that in front of you. So bring your instrument, bring your tools, bring what you need with you. Um, I don't rely on my memory as much as I used to. It, it, even sometimes before I go out there, I'm always off book, but sometimes I'll scan my notes real quick just to make sure I'm not blanking on anything. When you can try to make eye contact, involve your audience when possible. This is just a part of a dynamic performance. You don't have to do this, but later on when you get better at that piece, I would say definitely try to make eye contact, reach out to the audience and don't be staring at your book the whole time, especially if you're interested in competition. That's most important for competition. Basic, some basic etiquette here. Um, you want to look at the rotation of the bardic circle. So there's pick, pass, play. There's a general pass. There's something called pop-up pop up circle. I've never seen a pop-up circle where people just kind of randomly start performing in no discernible order. I, I imagine that would be like herding kittens. I, I can't imagine just letting bards decide who's going to go when. Uh, for the most part, you're going to see it's going to go around in a circle, like passing to the left, like in roulette. So you, if it's passing to the left, 
and I'm singing, you don't want to sit down to my left if you can help it because you've just cut off that person that might have been waiting for an hour to perform. So you want to sit to my right or vice versa if it's passing to the right. Or if you can't, just ask where's a good place, you know, if, if there's somewhere that someone can make room for you because you don't want to necessarily assume that you're okay to plop yourself right into two, between those two performers that maybe they've got something worked out between them. Uh, there's also a circle called circle style called pick pass play, where when it goes around to you, you can pick someone to perform something. And then once they're done performing, it'll go back to the person next to you, not necessarily staying with the first person you pick to perform. You can pass. You don't have to perform. You can just be an audience. You don't have to pick someone to perform. You can just say I pass and please, you know, feel free to do that if you're not ready to perform um, or you can play, which is pretty obvious, right? You can play your instrument, sing your song, tell your story, recite your poem, uh, make a joke about your bearing, whatever works for you. Um, don't tune your instruments or be flipping through your materials while others are performing. This is basic and it still happens sometimes. Um, you don't want to have a giant flashlight on your book when, the, you know, somebody next to you is, is trying to sing and you're glaring in their eye, just general kindness and, and respect when others are performing. Sometimes people don't have that. I like to encourage it. Uh, don't talk during a performance, um, you know, loudly. Obviously, we might have to whisper to somebody, but try not to talk. Don't, don't sing along with them. Um, don't step on their performance. It's okay to laugh. And I know this happens a lot with us, like in court, somebody says something funny and everybody laughs in court, but sometimes performances are extremely emotional and you don't want to necessarily make a joke when someone's performing or say something that might throw them off their game or, or affect their performance. Again, as is always in all things in life, a caveat, they might be looking for that feedback. They might look to you and ask you a question and, and wait for your response but read the room and be respectful of that performer's time because you want them to be respectful of your time. Try to practice your material beforehand. Practice, practice, practice this is always important. Practice, practice, practice. Um, and if you can't, I always like to let everybody know, hey, brand new song here. I might have some issues with the lyrics. I'm going to be looking at my book. If everybody could just give me a, you know, just warning you all first time I'm performing this song. I like doing that. You don't have to, but um, if you practice beforehand, obviously you're less likely to choke up or forget your words or blank out because performing, whether you're performing in a bardic circle or in a feast hall or in a competition can be nerve wracking for some people. You know, you might feel great at, at a competition for some reason, but in a circle where it's much more intimate and people are staring at you two, two inches away from you, that's harder for me than being on stage in a performance. So practice, practice. And as this is the quick and dirty version, uh, this is our question time. So if anybody had any questions uh, about anything that I didn't cover, or if you'd like clarification for anything, please feel free to ask them now. Do you have a preferred style for yourself? Um, storytelling is my, is my niche. That's my jam. Uh, storytelling and, and spoken like poetry, performance poetry. I do sing a bit. I don't consider myself a really strong singer, but I like to have something to throw out there real quick. So every once in a while, someone's like, perform something. And you're going, oh, uh, crap. Uh, yeah. Right. I hate <laughs> that. Yeah, that's when I wind up with inappropriate limericks myself. But right? yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I just saw a question come across from the uh, Griffin in the Sky. <laughs> it's the same question His Excellency had earlier. So you can just, you know. Just exactly. Yeah, I see that now. Thank you. Thank you, Skull. <laughs> Bart we Night is coming back when, um, in all honesty, it's, it's uh, work has been so intensely stressful. Um, I've kind of lost, I've, I've lost my desire to create my art. Uh, so that's been a little bit of a roadblock. So yeah, uh, Bart Night will come back when I can think of questions to ask people. We understand. We took a two month hiatus ourselves this summer yeah. to just kind of rest and refresh as it were. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun until it's not. And then when you're like, oh God, I have to do this tonight, don't I? It's a good time to take a break. What do you do with small children who have lots of questions right in the middle? <laughs> ask them if they'd like to perform because sometimes they want to be involved but don't know how to ask. Wow. Ooh. 
ask wanna... if they have any 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 songs that they like and it doesn't have to be an sca song i had duke morgan's child sing for me once i think it was a lullaby and it was lovely and they ran over and sang me a lullaby and they ran back to their encampment it was really nice they're great little kids okay well it's like snare the first time singing. i the first time i ever heard savage daughter was actually being sung by a smallish uh child and um the prince at the time was was encouraging me to stand up and go stand with the other baronesses and uh and the princess and and you know bond and i'm like i am literally trying not to cry as i sit here at the table listening to this for the first time yeah <laughs> let a baroness weep let, let, but, can, uh, can the baroness just cry please yeah yeah i'm just i'm feeling i'm having feelings right I now i do not need encouragement from a man that's right <laughs> let me weep in my own feminine way uh and, and that's and that actually brings up a good point so if you're performing and you're getting emotional um it's okay to stop and take a breath and take a beat and you know a couple deep breaths to try to recenter yourself because sometimes your performance is going to bring up emotions you maybe weren't aware were there you might start singing something and for some reason you think of your mom you know you might start singing something and you think of your dog i it's so um if you can you know pause in your performance if it allows and even if it doesn't allow give yourself that grace and if you are too emotional it's okay to stop it's okay to say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna close it there thank you and i want everybody else who's around to please you know just accept that and please don't ever push a person into performing um when i say ask the child if maybe they'd like to be involved we don't also want to push them into being involved yeah. right yeah yeah um, I would add to that as well. I grew up in church where music was a thing. If it is a well-known song, it's totally an option to, to say, if you know the song, sing with me. Right, exactly. Because it gives you the time to collect yourself if you're going to collect yourself or just to, to end pleasantly. But um, I did see we had a couple of other questions come in as well. <laughs> oh, great. Um, so there's one right above that, Clovis, it says, are are you allowed to use your phone or other non-period devices or or i need glasses i need glasses devices. devices or tools there we go <laughs> i mean it's you know it's it's not 1995 anymore i think that if that's where you've got your your pieces is on your tablet or on your phone that's that's where you have them I went to onto your West War and sat in on an interkingdom circle and the bards in the West have like three inch notebooks filled with songs. And that to me was like, I can't carry all that around. That's, <laughs> that's not, that's not going to fit in my basket. I mean, yeah, if that's what you're working with. That's what you're working with. I'd suggest turning on your blue light filter. So you're not glaring in your face, you know, around the fire when you're trying to perform, but yeah, it's totally valid. Uh, Mistress Gala, who's my Laurel, sang the Brave and Bonnie host. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And she was reading it off of her phone just, just this weekend, just yesterday. So yeah, totally okay. Um, I would again, I would say if you were in a competition, you want to be off book as much as possible. Or I have one of those pretty like leather, thin leather thing, but you can put your phone there and you look like you're singing off some sheet music and it looks very nice. <laughs> I think I'll, that's one of those projects we were supposed to finish during this pandemic was actually to make a for our uh, specifically for our ceremonial for court, um, you know, the fake book so we can fit a an iPad or or some yeah. form of tablet in there. Yeah, and I think they make them. You could probably, if you're not handy with leather, um, you I think they make for iPads and tablets. They look like leather books. So yeah, I'd say if that's what you're comfortable with and that's where you have all your pieces, definitely use it. I mean, we are, we are Skadians, so picking up random new right. hobbies. <laughs> right, we're Skadians. And, but yeah, I, um, a lot of interesting uh, stories that I have found that I like to, to use are on my Google Books because they're free, like Scottish medieval stories, but they're all those kind of Victorian, you know, versions of medieval stories, but it's still a great starting point for me. And they're all on my Google Books on my tablet. So mm -hmm. yeah. I hate saying you're allowed. I mean, you're a human person and you're an adult. So I, yes, you are allowed. <laughs> um, I guess if it's a period circle, you'd want to keep that covered, obviously. 
Yeah, but fortunately, I mean, like you said, there are a lot of really excellent options for, yeah. for doing that. Um, even even if you don't have leather working as a skill, it's yeah. pretty easy that to fake to fake a book of some kind. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Clovis, add that back onto the list. <laughs> um, oh yes, it looks like there was another question. It says, can drum circles coexist with bardic circles? Yeah, I I haven't seen a drum circle in so long. I don't even know if I could speak to that. I mean, when I was first playing in Kaid in the in the mid to late 90s, um, there were bardic circles and there were drum and dance circles and they were two mm -hmm. separate things because they were serving two separate purposes, right? Drum circles was, there was, I mean, you know, good Lord, there could be 10, 12, 20 people all drumming together and vibing, which is amazing, and dancers. Whereas the bards, um, it's mostly solo performances. So I, I, I don't know how you could, coexist the two because some of those dances go on for so long and then you're like all right everybody stop dancing i'm gonna tell a story now <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't know if it would work i think if you as an individual drummer wanted to go to a bardic circle and do a little drum piece that would be entirely different and it's an instrument and that's a valid you know that's your valid bardic art but i don't know that you could get a bunch of drums and a bunch of bars together and expect any kind of cohesion mm -hmm. uh, that'd be hard because yeah, they're, they're just completely different purposes. They're kind of at cross purposes. And I've noticed at drum circles, there's a lot of loud talking outside of the drum circle. You know, it, it tends to draw a louder crowd where you maybe wouldn't be able to hear somebody performing and telling yeah. everybody to be quiet. I've had a lot of people go, well, I don't want to be told to be quiet at a feast just because someone's going to sing a song. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna go sing over there. Yeah, I was I was a music minor uh, in college, and we would have you know they had drum circles. Um, and I think you brought up doing it as a bardic performance. I think it's important to remember that the kind of um, drum circle performance length tends to be substantially longer and more freeform. Yeah, then, and there, therein lies yeah. the problem. I think if you're like yeah. one person with a drum and you could do your three to five minute specific yeah. song thing, but granted five minutes is a long time for one drum. Yeah. So I think you'd have to <laughs> streamline your song performances. Yeah. Yeah, and that and, can be tricky. Yeah, and with any instrument you'd have to. I mean, I can't go in there with a harp and do 15 minutes on a harp either. What? Yeah, I can't play harp anyway, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and that's i i think that's something that we struggle with as as performing skadians is historically these performances would take you yeah. know half half an hour an hour and so we we look at the literature and it's like and and this card spoke for three hours on the you know yeah and, there's nothing and, else going on too so yeah yeah and but the, the modern person has Okay, I have the attention span of a gnat anyway. So <laughs> I may not be the best example, but yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot going on at events. You know, there's there might be a step down party, there might be a drumming circle, there might be mm -hmm. a, a half cosplay thing going on, there might be a visual. So yeah, it would be really hard to hold somebody's attention for an hour. I would say if if you want to do a single performance for something, um, like June Fair is something that we do out here in Ontario, for those of you not in Ontario. But like a, a a public demo type thing where they're like, hey, we need we need demos. Can you demo? Can somebody demo? That is a fantastic opportunity for you to do a solid performance of your own for 20, 30 minutes or whatever the demo mm -hmm. window is that they give you. So I've gone to June Fair before and I've performed for a half an hour and it was mostly mundanes and my Laurel and my real good friend, but I performed for a half an hour. So there are opportunities to do that. Um, and those open public events where they're calling for demos are always a great place for you as a performer to get out there and be like, I can do that. I've got a half hour of drum material. Cool. Go do it. Because you may not have that long um, ever at a baric circle. You know, you mm -hmm. may, they may get around to you twice, depending <laughs> on how many bars there are. Very true. Well, it's like, it's like when I try to tell jokes. 
in court. And I mean for it to be like a 30 second joke. And it winds up being like three minutes. And my populace is looking at me like, we can still tar and feather you, your excellency. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't. Speaking I, of I didn't the population, we have never ever thought that. <laughs> it's like, You're how are you, my Baroness? I didn't vote for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't vote for me either. The craziest thing. Did you have something you wanted to say, Rex? Oh. No, okay. Sorry, he's been diligently making us dinner, so. <laughs> Good is there uh, he's a very good husband um i don't i don't remember if you is there anything that you wished that someone had told you that that they that you've learned along the line um, um you know uh, um i think i covered a lot of the things that i would have wished to known uh there is when i did my first competition though and I didn't understand why somebody was handing packets of paper out to everybody. It's like, what are they doing? The, the know what your documentation requirements are beforehand, and um, be prepared to either orally give your documentation, which I prefer, or you know, you've got your little packets of paper to hand out to everybody. Um, that shocked me. I didn't understand what was happening. I was like. Okay, why is that little girl giving everybody packets? She was like a 16 year old. She was great. She's an amazing, uh, amazing performer. But she was giving everybody packets of paper. And went, I have no idea what's happening here right now. So I just sang a Gaelic song and I, I did a story and I sang another song and I was like, okay, but I, I had no idea what was really happening. So <laughs> ask or review the rules closely and then ask and then ask some more just so you know what you're getting yourself into. So you don't feel like, oh no, I've done something wrong. She ended up winning, coincidentally. <laughs> it's crazy yeah. how that happens sometimes. I hate it when that happens. I'm like, dude, I just gave you the best winged performance of my life. And I was hilarious. It, right? And this yeah. person who researched and has documented, this is ridiculous. What do you mean a period French song? I don't even, what? Huh? Ugh. Right? Yeah. Right? I, I, can, I can say like two stock phrases in French and that's about it. So. Yes. And one of them is I do not speak French, which is my go-to in any new language. <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah, right. Oh. But yes, uh, was there anyone else who had questions? Because <laughs> otherwise I can talk forever and just FYI. Our teacher didn't know this when we first contacted her about teaching. <laughs> no, because I've definitely never interviewed you before. Oh, that's true. That's I forgot. Dang it. People should stop interviewing me because now people know like my foibles. <laughs> so Zuleika, I'm sorry, I think I do. I was merely confirming that you can in fact talk forever. <laughs> I have a question. Uh-huh. So can we have our, can we have the slides emailed to us afterwards? Uh, why don't you drop your email for me in chat and I will snag that, okay? Thanks. Yeah. And if you're wondering, that's uh, me. That's a very wonderful barter, current Kingdom Bardic Champion Andromaca. That is Baroness Angharat Virchrenolf, Baron Gurdon, and his lovely wife, Baronais, and Dudley the dog. <laughs> Baron Gurdon is the one I make fun of regularly. Wins me I've championships. I've got one. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I've just got one last question. Sure. Did Enter ever have like a current songbook or any songbooks of any kind? Because I'd love to try playing an Enter again in the SCA. I Other than the Elf Hill books that I've seen, um, which I think are SCA wise, I don't know if Enter does. If anybody knows the answer to that, please give it. Um, I haven't seen any. I believe there there is one, but unfortunately, I think it's copyrighted. Okay. And uh, finding a copy is sometimes difficult. Okay. Uh, they, I used to see them all the time, like when I first started. That yeah, was, a million years ago. Yes. So that might be a good question for on Facebook. Bards of Ontier is a Facebook group. There's something like three or four hundred bards in there. Um, so yeah. I'm assuming somebody could answer that question out of three or four hundred people. I would hope so. We've got a few bardic laurels in Ontier that are fabulous, and um, they they would probably be a bit be better able to answer that question than I would be. 
Ah, it does look like the Scald has just posted a link to Avacall's songbook. Look Thank at you. that. Thank you, Scald. One upping on tier. Yes, yeah. Avacall, our, <laughs> our little baby that got away. <laughs> Avacall was our principality for those of you that are joining us out of kingdom. And they left us and now they're having events. Oh, the wet and soggy host. Oh, I see. I see how it's going to oh, be at the call. I see so how you, it's going to be. You built our, our song, huh? Yes. It's okay. I have how many filks? I have, I think, at least three filks uh, in my head. And some of them even have partial lyrics. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> right? Right? All right. I, um, I encourage people to filk, to contrafact um, as a way to, to get in there, write songs about your local barons and baronesses, your king and queen, events that happened, your friends, your households. It's a great way to get started. Um, even if you can't find song books or period pieces you like, it's mm -hmm. it, it's always a, an easy and fun way, I think, to to jump into a bardic circle is, hey, I wrote this song about, like I said, about watching, uh, about watching the uh, Crown Prince Silver Fox Sven nail some guy just so we have a five out of nine here in on tier. You got to win five right? out of nine in finals. Right? Only when we have a certain king. Certain king. <laughs> five. He did five in a row. Boom, 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 boom. In, inside of four minutes. It was crazy. It, it was, was so crazy. Holy. Right? Right? Yeah. It's, it, it's nuts. I've never seen anybody fight like that. So. Yeah. Clovis kept yelling because I was, you know, wandering around the house and he kept, he'd be like, Sven just like walked up and smacked him and walked away. That was crazy. That's Nailed crazy. him. Yeah. It wasn't a one shot. It was a three shot. <laughs> he, he, he knocked somebody on his butt within two seconds. Yeah. I, yeah. I blinked and missed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that would make an amazing filk or poem. So use, use the resources around you, even if you can't find a SCA songbook, because that's what the early people were doing. The early people. The yeah. ancient Scadians <laughs> did that. They wrote songs about their kings. We can yeah. do that too and make our own books. Yeah, and I think, I, I don't know, sometimes sometimes you, uh, ancient Scadians, yes, ancient Scadians, that works. Um, but the, uh, yeah, yeah, I, hmm, yes. I always think that filks are appropriate in, in all contexts. But I know that that is not always the case. I wrote a filk for the Baron of Aquaterra, although he didn't ask for it and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it to uh, Never Gonna Dance Again by the beloved George Michael. And it was called I'm Never Gonna Fence Again. Oh. And I sang it at their Yule Feast and embarrassed the hell out of him. And he loved it. So do that. <laughs> I, I do have a plan. Know your audience, though. Know, know your, your audience. audience. I am very close friends with Baron of Aquaterra. Uh, and I basically, as little sister, I can get away with this stuff. But but it's fun. Write yeah. folks about your friends. Write your own songbooks. Write about your local customs in the SCA. I think it's a lot of fun. Write about your intentions. I did right. a book of part of your world about wanting to be a laurel. There you go. That's brilliant. <laughs> part of your world too much laurels then you're like then you're a laurel you're like never mind <laughs> yeah not anywhere near that yet i am going to hit end <laughs> on the record did you have any uh words that you wanted to say in closing before he cuts you off oh in closing thank you so much for joining me uh <laughs> Uh, I do have some comedy videos on Bard tonight on YouTube and on my Facebook. Feel free to check those out. I interview funny people in Altier. Haven't done it in a while because uh, my cup is a little empty, unfortunately. <sighs> I was hoping I'd get to go to Crown last month and refill it a bit, but that was ended. But uh, please keep creating. Please keep trying. Um, I, I, I don't want to see anybody excluded from the Bardic Arts. And real quick. If anybody tells you that you can't be a bard unless you're a singer, you can rightly tell them to sod off. <laughs> Edit that if you want, but those are my feelings on this. That is perfect. Thank you. I have to agree. <laughs>